new Russian horror movie, features a new style and storyline, including doppelganger zombies, and multiple horror elements such as demons. A woman arrives in a deep forest, her heart is racing, she is running frantically through the woods, as if there's a monster behind her. A gust of cold wind blows over her head, she looks up, and a crow drops right in front of her eyes. She's terrified. Just then, behind the tree where the woman hides, a faint sound is heard. A dark figure is staring in the woman's direction. In her panic, she rushes into a maze. In a corner, she finds a mirror. She approaches slowly. The reflection in the mirror astonishes her, as if something has defied logic. Before she can react, she is ensnared by black ropes protruding from the tree trunk. No matter how hard she struggles, she can't break free. Room cards and keys slip from her hands. At this moment, she finally understands what might be inside the mirror. Three months later, on a small island, a mysterious event is taking place, for couples gather together to repair their relationships. In this place, just as they arrive, the organizer arranges a game called Truth, which everyone must share their stories. A lie detector tests their honesty. First is Andy, an extreme sports enthusiast. He states, his life is full of excitement. Until he met Olivia, he found inner peace. However, the lie detector revealed his deception. It turns out, during his relationship with Olivia, he had cheated on her. Next is Michael, an IT engineer. His girlfriend Stacy is an archaeologist. They hope to reconcile through this opportunity. But the lie detector indicates to everyone, Stacy is concealing her true intentions. Next are Kate and Nick. Their issue lies with Kate's desires, which aren't fulfilled by Nick. Javier and Ginny's situation is similar to Kate's, but the difference is, both of them have the same problem. They often seek excitement outside. After the self-introduction phase, the NPC distributes a letter to everyone, emphasizing, the questions in the letter must be answered truthfully. Kate opens the letter first. She encounters a sharp question. If other men excite her more than Nick, she strongly denies it. She states, she will no longer participate in this game. She wants to quit immediately while the two NPCs stop her, informing her that once the activity begins, quitting midway is not allowed. Next, Stacy takes the letter. She realizes the organizer's intention is not to help them repair their emotions, but to intentionally provoke conflicts between them. Therefore, she decides to remain silent about the questions in the letter. Suddenly, Michael transforms into a demon, and she wakes up abruptly. She realizes she is in a maze, with strange sounds echoing around her. Stacy notices there seems to be something unusual in a cave ahead. She goes over to investigate. It turns out to be a flashlight and a letter. Just as she is about to open the letter, a shadow flashes before her eyes. Stacy looks in the direction where the shadow disappeared, but finds no one there. Only faint breathing. Following the source of the sound, she finds a mirror, and the sound seems to come from inside the mirror. After careful observation, she doesn't notice anything strange. But as Stacy turns to leave, her reflection in the mirror remains in place, with a strange gaze looking outside. Andy suddenly appears behind Stacy, with a smile on his face. Stacy turns around, and the mirror reflects. An intimate scene between her and Andy, while Andy in reality, starts undressing, seemingly enticing her silently, to prevent the mirror's contents from affecting her. Stacy smashes it to pieces, and the psychological attacks instantly vanish. The real Andy, now appears in the central area of the maze. He also receives the same items, a flashlight and a letter. Only by finding all their companions, can they leave this maze? However, Stacy searches around, except for finding an old pocket watch, and a transparent lens. She finds nothing else, out of curiosity. She tries using the lens to observe in front of her, and unexpectedly sees a figure ahead. But upon closer inspection, the figure suddenly disappears. Stacy tries again, and the figure suddenly appears in front of her. This frightens Stacy. At this moment, Stacy notices, on a nearby branch, a bracelet engraved with her name. Just as she wonders, a voice suddenly sounds beside her. The voice comes from a nearby cave entrance. She starts to investigate, and discovers a hidden, room keycard with room 11 written on it. As Stacy leaves, she coincidentally bumps into her boyfriend, Michael. Meanwhile, Nick also arrives with Kate. They also experienced some strange encounters. They realize, this island is unusual, and they must escape as soon as possible. Olivia's voice comes from behind. She guides everyone to follow her. She claims to have found a way out with Andy. When they return, they can't find Javier and Ginny anywhere. The NPC informs them that the two have completed the tests and returned earlier. Michael questions the NPC why they were drugged in their drinks. 
and whether the level of danger in testing is necessary to be so high, they suggest quitting the activity. But the NPC explains that the visions are hallucinations caused by drugs, and insists that once the activity starts, no one can leave midway. Even if they insist on leaving, there won't be any boats or planes to pick them up, so they must endure until the end of the activity. Everyone feels reluctant, there is no other choice but to accept this explanation. As night falls, Stacy asks Michael if he encountered anything bizarre in the maze. Michael honestly confesses that he did encounter many alluring illusions, but he remained determined. In fact, Michael attempted to escape the island and even invited Stacy to leave with him, but Stacy refused. Michael is puzzled by this and asks for the reason. Stacy then reveals her true intention for coming to the island. In fact, her twin sister, Melissa, went missing on the island. She takes out the bracelet she found in the maze, which belongs to Melissa. Indeed, however, Michael thinks she's just overly anxious, forgetting that it's her own possession, suggesting that she should calm down, even suggesting she should take some calming medication. Michael starts searching through a drawer. He doesn't understand her pain and even mistrusts her. All of this disappoints Stacy. Stacy angrily leaves. She walks out of the room. Unexpectedly, she sees the NPC entering a room. Her intuition tells her that this is far from ordinary. Meanwhile, Kate returns from the maze. She discovers that the wound on her neck is rapidly deteriorating. It turns out, Kate couldn't resist temptation in the maze. When she dated with Javier, she got scratched by a sharp object. Kate hears a knocking sound outside the door. She opens the door, but she's left dumbfounded by what's outside. Stacy is awakened by crying sounds outside the door. She gets up to investigate. Unexpectedly she sees a woman. This woman appears ghostly, and in a flash, she appears in front of Stacy. Stacy is frightened, and runs away as fast as she can, but she unexpectedly falls into an unfamiliar place. At this moment, a dark figure passes by, catching Stacy's attention. She walks towards the corner. Unexpectedly, she sees that woman again. She's squatting on the ground, doodling aimlessly. Her strokes are fast and chaotic. Stacy feels, this figure seems familiar, so she gathers her courage and squats beside her to confirm her suspicion. Stacy softly calls out, picking up the map with the NPC room depicted on it, confirming her internal guess. This might hold the secret of the island. Stacy wakes up from her terror. It was just a nightmare. The next morning, the NPC announces two important matters. Kate and Javier have successfully completed their mission, and the next test involves everyone swapping partners and spending a day alone together to test the self-control of the partners. Yet, now, Stacy is drawn to a set of keys hanging from the NPC's waist. An idea emerges in her mind. The other teams are still immersed in emotional exchanges. Only Stacy, accompanied by Andy, comes to the room marked with number 11. Stacy asks him to wait outside. She enters the room alone and discovers an old box covered in mysterious patterns. A bottle of pale yellow liquid lies inside the box. Its purpose is unknown. There's also a yellowed piece of paper, depicting the room the NPC entered. Right at that moment, Andy suddenly appears behind her, facing the paper on the ground. Andy asks about its origin. Stacy doesn't hide anything, honestly telling him that it's her sister's work. Three months ago, my sister came here, and then mysteriously disappeared. Stacy traced her here, hoping to seek Andy's assistance, to obtain the NPC's keys, as those clues might reveal her sister's whereabouts. It turns out, this seemingly ordinary Stacy is actually Melissa, the sister of the missing person. This all started with a drunken revelry. Melissa put on her sister Stacy's clothes and was coincidentally seen by Michael, who was returning home. Michael mistook the woman in front of him for his girlfriend, so he approached and embraced her. Under the influence of alcohol and impulse, Melissa got carried away, and in a daze, they engaged in intimate activity. Nevertheless, all of this was witnessed by the real Stacy when she returned home, out of protection for her sister. She decided to let Melissa become Stacy while she embarked on an archaeological journey, and then she disappeared on this island. After learning about the island's hidden secrets, Andy decided to assist Melissa in unraveling the mysteries. During a dance performance, he stole the keys from the NPC's possession and handed them over to Melissa. Using this opportunity, she sneaked into an underground chamber where there was an altar with lit candles. There, she discovered a woman, and she wanted to approach and investigate. Suddenly, four masked individuals appeared, forcing her to temporarily hide. Those people took the woman away, disappearing into a maze. Melissa followed closely behind, 
and when they removed the woman's mask, Melissa was shocked to discover that it was Kate who had supposedly quit. In fact, Kate hadn't actually quit the event, but had been captured by the NPC. They placed Kate next to a wooden stake, then raised their hands and began chanting mysterious incantations. Before long, a mysterious object started to appear gradually, like a cocoon pulsating with malevolence. Melissa and Kate were both stunned by this sudden scene. Emerging from it was a woman who looked exactly like Kate. While Kate looked on in terror, the doppelganger approached and drained Kate's life force. Then she departed. Once all the NPCs had left, Melissa finally dared to come out and inspect. But Kate had already shown no signs of life. Melissa had no time to sigh. As she discovered a notebook next to Kate, she opened it and saw that it was written in her sister Stacy's handwriting. She brushed aside the branches in front and saw Stacy, who had been sucked dry and only had an empty shell left. At that moment, an eerie voice echoed in her ears. She suppressed her grief, picked up her sister's notebook, and left this place. She made up her mind to seek her own revenge. The notebook revealed information about these creatures, known as succubi in Europe, shape-shifting and elusive, able to assume the form of anyone, particularly drawn to souls filled with jealousy, anger, and lust, enticing people to unleash their primal desires, and subsequently stealing their souls, enslaving the victims, in order to find a way to destroy them. Stacy discovered a method in ancient texts that could banish succubi from the mortal realm. She wrote down a specific incantation on paper and burned it to ashes mixed it with a suitable amount of alcohol, and stirred it together with the ashes. Then, following the instructions in the ancient texts, she recited a spell. This way, she obtained a bottle that could reveal the true form of succubi. She tightly held the mysterious potion in her hand. Therefore, all she had to do was expose them, and set them on fire to end their lives. Suddenly, an old photograph slipped out of her diary. She picked it up and looked at it, only to discover that it was Ginny who had come to the island with them. Ginny was the mastermind behind everything, and the legendary succubus. Michael couldn't resist Ginny's temptation, and the wound spread from his neck to his chest. It was clear that he had been infected. Melissa took Michael back to Olivia. She revealed the truth to everyone, and they realized the seriousness of the situation. They immediately planned to evacuate by plane. Succubus were already waiting at the door. Javier also became a puppet of Succubus, and commanded Michael to become its new servant. Michael seemed to have no resistance as he walked towards Ginny. Ginny was about to start the exorcism ritual immediately, while Michael launched a sudden attack from behind. Before she could finish chanting, thrusting a blade directly into Succubus's neck, Ginny fell to the ground, and her followers fell along with her, unable to rise. But Michael was too heavily infected, and couldn't go on. Melissa was very sad. At that moment, her sister's figure suddenly appeared in the mirror, reminding her of the clues in Stacy's notebook. She knew well that Succubus couldn't be easily killed. She had to fulfill her sister's last wish and completely eliminate Succubus. Olivia and Andy were determined to stay here together. Stacy's notebook also mentioned a method to deal with Succubus. This creature feared the reflection in mirrors, especially when it sees its true self in the mirror. Its power is greatly diminished. They need to prepare three mirrors along with the disinfectant concocted by Stacy to completely eliminate this demon. Immediately after, everyone started to act, their goal being to search for mirrors. Before long, Olivia found one in the maze, and Andy found his target in another location. Just as he tried to move the mirror, he accidentally touched a hand. He looked into the depths of the bushes, and suddenly a pair of eyes opened in the bushes, followed by numerous hands reaching out, attempting to drag Andy inside. Fortunately, Olivia appeared just in time, holding a mirror, and successfully dispersing the creatures in the bushes. This confirms Melissa's previous warning, that their fear of mirrors is real. With the mirrors in hand, they quickly set up traps, and their next task was to lure and capture Succubus. When they tried to summon Succubus, nothing happened, realizing that her presence might be interfering with her companions. Olivia voluntarily withdrew to focus on destroying Succubus, so she hid in a corner, and it proved to be effective. As a result, the behavior of the two changed, revealing their primal instincts. Although this part of the plot may not be pleasant to watch, it created a very good effect. Shortly after, Olivia's scream confirmed the arrival of Succubus, and Andy understood the urgency of the situation. He decided to go find Olivia first. He left Melissa here to wait for Succubus. Yet, Andy returned shortly after he left. Melissa saw him come back, and immediately opened the mirror, removing her clothes. She embraced this Andy closely. At the same time, another Andy arrived here. Seeing this situation, 
he opened the other mirrors. Melissa pushed Andy away, and poured all the potion on him. As a result, he let out a painful scream. At that moment, the true face of Succubus was finally revealed. Its power was so strong that it was shocking. Even the sturdy mirrors were shattered by the impact. Everyone sensed a chilling presence behind them. A group of terrifying zombies appeared behind them. Surprisingly, these zombies did not attack them. Instead, they headed straight for Succubus. It turned out that not only the living could see the true form of Succubus, but even the victims whose lives were taken by her could see. It seemed to be a revenge of the victims, taking advantage of Succubus being controlled by the zombies. The group threw prepared Molotov cocktails. Soon, Succubus turned into charred remains in the flames. At this moment, a hand gently touched Melissa. Melissa looked up. Instantly, tears welled up in her eyes. It was her sister, Stacy. Stacy had come to bid a final farewell to Melissa. The death of Succubus brought liberation to the enslaved souls. It was undoubtedly a consolation. After completing their mission, they planned to evacuate by helicopter. However, Melissa suddenly remembered that. Her sister's diary was left behind at the hotel. Andy suggested going back to retrieve it. As they parted ways, Andy expressed his desire to meet Melissa when he returned. Melissa felt puzzled. Meanwhile, as Andy returned to the hotel, the mirrors he passed suddenly shattered. And thus, the movie comes to an end. The film Succubus was released in 2024. It tells the story of several young couples who visit a private island to participate in an activity aimed at enhancing their relationships, but encounter mysterious and horrifying events. With each person having different motives, Melissa risks her life to search for her sister and ultimately unravels the secrets of the place. What sets this Russian horror film apart from others in the genre is its exceptional atmospheric setting and excellent plot design. Overall, it is a horror thriller that is definitely worth watching. If you enjoy my channel, please consider subscribing.